Hey, we're about to bring you another investigative report by the Debt Free Army where we're exposing the seven greatest lies perpetrated by the devil. And today, number five. So I tell you what, let's get started. child of God, welcome to the Rich Thoughts webcast brought to you by the Debt Free Army. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much to those folks in 110 countries that watch this broadcast. Thank you for being a part of the Rich Thoughts family. Hey, today we're going to continue our teaching, Seven Greatest Lies Ever Perpetrated by the Devil. We're going to get number five, which is, our family has always been broken in debt. There's no way out. And that's obviously a lie of the devil. We're going to get to that in a moment. But let me encourage you to visit our website, debtfreearmy.org. Check out all the free stuff, over 700 blogs and teachings. Just a, I mean, we're talking a financial library of information that can set you free from everything that has you bound. It can lift you up and move you to a higher, well, to higher ground. If I keep on, I'll be singing a song. But anyhow, check it out. All right, drum roll. Here comes the number five, part five, of the seven greatest lies ever perpetrated by the devil. When someone says, our family has always been broken in debt and there's no way out, that, script, that statement is not only scripturally inaccurate, it is void of any sort of spiritual basis. See, the devil should never be able to get away with using that kind of lie on any born-again believer. Because even though if, if no one else in your family is born again, if nobody else but you is born again, there was a defining moment when you gave your heart to the Lord, when you confessed your sins and you accepted Jesus as the Lord of your life. And you became born again. In fact, you transformed from being a sinner to a saint. Now that decision wasn't a family decision. It was a personal decision. In fact, everybody else in your family could have been as lost as a goose in a blizzard. But there was a point where you decided that you were going to become born again. Now, if God cares enough about you to save your soul, then make no mistake about it that he's concerned about your smallest concern. Smallest concern may be your largest debt or how much money is in your checking account. If God loved you enough to send his son to die for you, don't you think he's interested in everything that's going on in your life and to say anything else? is, well, it's just a lie of the devil. Now, chances are there's nobody else in your family that's spending the time that you do. For instance, listening to the Rich Thoughts TV broadcast, visiting our website, and just gaining financial wisdom and insight to take you from where you are or where your family was to where God wants you to be. So I'm going to share with you seven reasons why it's a lie to say that you'll always be in debt because of members of your family. It's just scripturally wrong. First, you're either denying, see, if you say that this is true, if you accept this lie, you're denying the scriptural directives found in the Word of God. First, if you accept this lie, you're accepting the, the you know, you're, I'm sorry, if you accept this lie, you're denying the scriptural directives found in the Word of God. For instance, Romans 13, 8 in the Amplified Bible says, Keep out of debt and know no man anything, except to love one another. For he who loves his neighbor, who practices loving others, has fulfilled the law, relating to one's fellow man, meeting all its requirements. Now, the Message Bible translation of Romans 13, 8, is even a little clearer. Don't run up debts. Don't run up debts. Can I say it again? Don't run up debts, except for the huge debt of love that you owe each other. You need more proof? How about Psalm 97, 10? Ye that love the Lord, hate evil. He preserveth the souls of his saints. He delivered them out of the hands of the wicked. Ye that love the Lord hate evil. Now, I, I felt stirred, and I looked up the word evil in Strong's Concordance from this particular verse, and it's the word H7451, and here's what it means. Bad, 
unpleasant, evil, giving pain, unhappiness, misery. Now let me just tell you, dead is bad. Dead is unpleasant. Dead definitely delivers pain. And dead positively brings about unhappiness. So misery, I can also say this, misery is debt's closest friend. So let me just say it this way. If you love God, not only do you hate evil, but you need to hate debt. We're going to get to the second one right after this. You know, there's all different kinds of money. There's hard-earned money, inherited money, stolen money, gambling money, and the list goes on and on. I'm Harold Herring, president of the Debt Free Army, and I'm here to tell you about a very different kind of money, miracle money. I've discovered that God's miracle money is available not just to a select few, but to those who know how to reach out and receive it. I want to send you a free copy of a book that I helped develop and publish entitled Miracle Money. God told me to put this book into the lives of those who had the faith to pick up the phone and call 1-800-DEBT-FREE. If you're suffering economic hardship, if it seems you just can't make ends meet financially, then this may be the most important phone call you'll ever make. The book is free. The call is free. So why not pick up the phone right now and call 1-800-DEBT-FREE? Learn about the miracle money God's holding for you. Call 1-800-DEBT-FREE. Hey, child of God, welcome back. Today we're talking about the fifth greatest lie ever perpetrated by the devil. When you say, well, my family's been in debt and lived in lack, and I guess that's just the way it's going to be. That's not the way it's going to be. Seven reasons why not. Number one, you're denying the scriptural directives found in the Word of God. And number two, when you make such an ill-advised, unscriptural statement, you are limiting God. When you say that's the way it's always going to be, you, in fact, are limiting God. And that's the one, well, just to be honest with you, that's one of the dumbest things that anybody could ever do would be to try to limit God. Why? Because Matthew 19, 26 says, But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Hallelujah! With God all things are possible. Matthew 9, 23 in God's Word translation says, Jesus said to him, As far as possibilities go, everything is possible for the person who believes. In God, there are no limitations. And if you're following the Word of God, if you're seeking after Him, if you're in His presence, if you are obeying His instructions, then you have no limitations as well, as long as you're lining up with the Word of God. You know, the thing about scripturally ignorant statements is that sometimes they become personal limitations to the person who's speaking them. Self-imposed, self-maintaining, and of course, self-defeating. These statements have nothing to do with God, but it's a choice that you make, and it's a choice that only you can make to change the way you're thinking. Psalm 74, I'm sorry, Psalm 78, 41. 78, 41 says, Yea, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. God brought Israel out of Egypt with great miracles and promises, but yet some chose to turn back. Just not real smart to do that. You know, the end of the, you see, here, here's what you need to know. You know, you've got a choice to make. Just that simple. You've got a choice to make. Third, you either are, you are empowering your adversary, you're empowering your adversary when you believe a lie. The words that you speak will either enable, empower, or disable the blessings of God. The enemy can't read your mind, but you can accelerate and intensify his attacks by the words that you choose to speak. Matthew 12, 37 in the Message Bible. Every one of these careless words is going to come back to haunt you. Words are powerful. Take them seriously. Words can be your salvation. Words can also be your damnation. Your words will either bring punishment or reward. Our destiny is not just determined by what we do, but by what we say as well. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 14 in the contemporary English version of the Bible. We are rewarded or punished by what we say and what we do. Your words have consequences, and you decide whether they're good or evil. Let me say that again. Your words have consequences, and you decide whether they're good or evil. Proverbs 18.20 in the Amplified Bible. A man's moral self shall be filled with the fruit of his mouth, and with the consequences of the words he must be satisfied, whether good 
or evil. Words will either bring you life or death, punishment or rewards, and again, you choose. Proverbs 18.21 in the Message Bible, words kill, words give life. They're either poison or fruit. You choose. You choose. And also, let me just give you one more. Uh, let me just say this too. Well, when you change how you think, then that will change the way that you speak and you'll no longer have to worry about the words coming out of your mouth. Uh, let me give you this last scripture. Proverbs 18.20 and the contemporary English version of the Bible. Make your words good. You'll be glad that you did. Make your words good. You'll be glad that you did. Well, you know, we've covered three of the seven and I can tell you right now, we're not going to get to the rest of them today. So I want to encourage you to join us again tomorrow so that we can pick up part two of the seven greatest lies ever told by the devil, number five. And that's just foolishly saying that your family's lived in debt and lack and feeling that you're destined to do so as well. I think we've proved thus far that's a lie of the devil, but we're going to finish this teaching tomorrow. But before you leave our website, make sure you take your mouse, move up to the top where it says sow a seed, and just ask God if today is the day that he'd have you sow a seed into the ministry of the Debt Free Army and the Rich Thoughts Television Network. Just do what he says, give what he says, that's all I ask. Well, until we meet again tomorrow, keep thinking rich thoughts and happy trails. Thank you for watching Rich Thoughts TV with Harold Herring. For more information, visit DebtFreeArmy.org or to watch previous episodes, go to RichThoughtsTV.com and check out the Rich Thoughts TV archives player on the front page. Get your free copy of Miracle Money. Visit www.miraclemoney.org and join thousands of other believers who are now experiencing Miracle Money because they took the first step. They read this book. Now it's your turn.